Hi everyone, so today we're going to talk about the Menlos theorem, which is one of the most fundamental results in Euclidean geometry. And we're also going to talk a little bit about the centroid and the circumcenter. So it's going to be quite an interesting discussion of geometry. And let's begin. So this is the problem number one from the European Girls Mathematical Olympiad, EGMO, in the year 2013. And in this video, we're going to be looking at what the Menlos theorem is, a little bit of discussion about the centroid and the circumcenter, and obviously how we can apply Menlos theorem to this particular problem. Then we have book sessions for senior math Olympiads, and at the end, a simulable challenging problem. This video is sponsored by Chinta.com. Since 2010, Chinta has trained thousands of students from all around the world in mathematical Olympiads, physics Olympiads, Computer Science and Informatics Olympiads, ISI CMI entrances, and research projects for school and college students. Okay, so before we kind of make the configuration of this question, let me just kind of demonstrate what this Menelaus theorem is, right? Menelaus theorem. So let's say we have a triangle, any triangle, ABC. And to this triangle ABC, what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend this side AB to this point F, right? Then I'm going to make a transversal. So this EF, line segment EF will be called as a transversal and it intersects side BC at D. Okay, so this is our geometrical configuration. Now, what does Menelaus theorem say? It states that BD divided by DC okay times ce divided by ea times af divided by fb is equal to one or a little bit more accurately i should take the modulus so this is what we call as the menelaus theorem right this is a very interesting result it can be proved in a number of ways homothety is a pretty good way to go about this but yeah you should just remember this result it's a pretty standard result. So basically, BD divided by CD, right, times CE divided by EA. So it's kind of like a cyclic order. You go in like in a cycle, in a circle. Then you have AF divided by FB or BF. And when you do that, you get the product as 1, right? And you're considering the side lengths, of course. So this is what is Menlos theorem. And now we're going to see how we can use this to this problem. It's actually a pretty straightforward um, usage of this. If you... If you if you can see that but now that we've discussed Menelaus theorem maybe just try drawing the figure on your own maybe just think about a little bit how Menelaus theorem can be used to this but okay let me just draw the figure over here so what's it saying it's saying that the side bc of the triangle abc right so let's say we have the triangle abc like this this is our triangle abc abc and then bc is extended beyond c to the point d right so that cd is equal to bc that's excellent then the side ca is extended beyond a to this point which i believe they have named as e okay that is amazing so that ce is or ae is twice of ca okay ae is twice of ca that's amazing and if ad is equal to be so they've given that AD, let me just connect that. This thing AD, they've told us is equal to BE, right? Let me just connect those. AD is equal to BE and prove that the triangle ABC is right angle. So we have certain things over here, right? Firstly, they told us that CD is equal to BC, which I've already marked in the figure. Then they told me that AE is twice of CA. Okay, that is great. So we know the ratio of AE by CA or CA by AE, right? And then they've also told me that AD is equal to BE. You can mark that if you want as well. AD is equal to BE, right? Now that being done, let me just make maybe a couple of uh, connections, right? So we had this side AD. Now, let me just also join D and E. Right, so that we have this proper triangle over here. Let me just extend BA over here and AD over here. And that's going to be quite important. 
So these are the constructions that we made in this. Let's just label a couple of these points. So let's say this point is X and let's say this point is Y. So this is quite fascinating. Now, now, so now we're going to try and use the Menelaus theorem, right? So basically EY by YB, EY by YB, right? Into AC divided by EA, right? So AC by EA times EY by YB, what will that be into? Into BD divided by CD is equal to one. Did you see the application, right? This was CA, right? AC divided by EA times EY divided by YB times entire BD divided by CD is equal to one. Okay, great. So EY divided by YB, which is kind of what I intend to find over here is equal to one times CD divided by BD times EA divided by AC. Okay, that is great. Now it's given to me that AE is twice of CA. So if I can just plug that in, so E y by Y B is equal to one times C D by B D times A E is twice of A C divided by A C. So that just gets cancelled. Now I also know that this point C is the midpoint of B D. In other words, B C is equal to C D. Right? B C is equal to C D. In other words, B D is equal to twice of C D because B D is the entire length. Right? So B D is equal to twice of C D. In other words, I can write E y by Y B is equal to 1 times CD divided by twice of CD times 2. So this 2 and 2 also gets cancelled. So EY by YB is 1. In other words, EY is equal to YB. And that's very really fascinating because let's just mark that in the figure. So EY is equal to YB. What does that mean that Y is the midpoint? Right. So Y just turned out to be the midpoint of EB. Right. So Y is midpoint of line segment EB. Now, similarly, I'll let you try this on your own. Can you prove that X will be the midpoint of ED? Again, this purely Menelaus theorem. So basically, this will be equal to this. Let's try applying, applying Menelaus theorem again, right? You will be able to get that EX is equal to XD. In other words, X is the midpoint. Now, do you actually notice something? Do you notice that this line segment EC, which I marked in red, is actually a median? Right? It's the median to the side BD is dividing the side BD into two equal halves. Similarly, this line segment BX right, is also median because dividing ED into two halves, two equal halves. Similarly, this line segment DY, right? D, DY is also a median because again, dividing this EB into two equal proportions, EY and YP. So these three are medians. And what is A? A is the point of intersection of those medians. What is the point of intersection of medians called? It's a centroid, right? So A is the centroid of this entire triangle BED, point of intersection of the medians, right? So A is centroid of triangle BED as BX, XC, or EC rather, BX, EC, and dy are medians and point of intersection of medians is called as the centroid okay awesome now you know the centroid will divide this into like what two is to one ratio right that's a pretty standard property so basically what is going to happen is that this side will be equal to this side will be equal to this side so if i just draw this triangle eba over here so in triangle AEB, if you actually draw it out, it's something like this, right? This was point number A, this was point E, this is B, and this is obviously Y. Connect this to this. We had proved that these three are equal to one another. So what does that mean? Doesn't that mean that Y is the circumcenter, right? Circumcenter of this triangle, of triangle AEB. What does it essentially mean? It essentially means I can draw a circle around these three points. And basically this YE is equal to YB is equal to YA is equal to the radius of that circle. This is called the circumradius, right? So basically Y is the center of that circle, right? In which the triangle is present. So therefore Y is the circumcenter of triangle AEB. 
Now, if it is a, if it is the, uh, if it is the circumcenter, it means that EB is diameter, right? EB is diameter. So that means that this angle will be 90 degree, but it's the angle in a semicircle, right? If EB is the diameter, that thing will be the semicircle. So therefore, angle EAB is equal to 90 degree, because angle in a semicircle is always 90 degree. One angle will be 90 degree, right? So EAB is 90 degree. Let's go back to the figure. EAB, EAB, this angle is 90 degree. Now, if this angle is 90 degree, if you look at the line segment EC, what does that mean? That essentially means that this angle will also be 90 degree. Linear pair, angles on a given line are always 180 degree, right? Or if I just want to write this, angle EAB plus angle BAC is equal to 180 degree, sum of angles in a line. So angle BAC is equal to 180 minus angle EAB, EAB is 90 degree. So angle BAC is equal to 90 degree or in other words, in triangle ABC, angle A is equal to 90 degree. Therefore, triangle ABC is right angled. And that is what we had to prove, right? So that's the question. And essentially, all we really had to do was apply Menlo's theorem. Menlo's theorem a couple of times to get these results that, you know, A will be the point of intersection of the medians. And once you saw that it's the point of intersection of the medians, beyond that, it's very easy to kind of visualize that Y will be the uh, circumcenter and after that it was I think pretty easy because angle in a semicircle is always 90 degree and then simply finish it off with linear pair and we are done so quite an interesting discussion of geometry and hope you learned something from that okay so moving on to certain book sessions for senior math olympiads we have I'm a compendian polynomials by Barbeo, elementary number theory by Siapinski, graph theory by Harari, combinatorics by Brualdi, Secrets and inequalities and functional equations and how to solve them by Christopher G. Small. Okay, so we have a similar but challenging problem. In triangle ABC, let E and F lie on sides AC and EB respectively, so that lines EF and BC intersect at K, where B is between C and K, right? Let BE and CF intersect at P and line AP intersects BC at D. Prove that BD over CD is equal to BK over CK. So again, try to draw the figure on your own at least, and then maybe try and use the Menelaus theorem. Right? I'm giving you that hint that this is purely a question of Menelaus theorem. Maybe try it out, and if you're able to solve it, let me know. Until then, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much, and bye-bye. The programs are designed for students who are passionate about mathematics. And they are personalized with one-on-one -on -one training, individual evaluation, and remedial sessions. The reason Chinta students are successful over the last 10 years because they are taught by mathematicians and real Olympiads from leading universities in India, United States and Europe. Some of our students come back to teach at Chinta from Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard, MIT, UCLA, ISI, CMI, IITs, TIFR and IISC. For more information, visit chinta.com.